This week, we discuss in the Torah two parshas, Tazria and Metzira. The common denominator between these two parshas is that they are discussing one subject, which is the subject of tsaras, the subject of leprosy. And in the first parsha, Tazria discusses the leprosy, which uh, happens on a person, uh, on his skin, all different types. And then it discusses the leprosy that happens uh, on a person's clothing. In Parshas Metzayda, it already discusses what is the law of the Tahara Samitzayda. How does a Metzayda become pure? In other words, once we have determined that someone has leprosy, so he becomes Tame, he becomes impure. So he has to bring all types of sacrifices, and then he has to wait a few days, and etc. It's a whole process. And then the Taita also discusses the leprosies that happens on a house, on the walls of a house. So the first thing we're going to do now is and take away a massive misconception. Everybody thinks that why does leprosy happen? Because of Lashon Hara. When someone seeks, speaks bad about somebody else, so what does Hashem do? He sends him a message and he gives him some leprosy, one type or another type, and this way the person will stop speaking Lashon Hara, bad speech about other people. But the truth is it's impossible to say that leprosy comes for the standard lush and horror that we are used to because of many reasons. Number one, we know that every single person, the Gemara says, every single person unfortunately does speak lush and horror, a little more, a little less, but he does. And that's why we have to be very careful not to, but the bottom line is that they do. No. So if everyone speaks lush and horror, then everyone should have been a Metzayda, everybody should have been a leprosy, should have leprosy. And we don't find that. When we look throughout history, we hardly find anybody who found leprosy, who had a leprosy. We find a few cases here, a few cases there, but very, very seldom. Not only that, when we look in the Torah and we start looking around, who are the people who spoke Lashon Hara and they got leprosy? We have basically two people in the Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu and Miriam Anivia, the two greatest tzaddikim, our big Lashon Hara talkers. So obviously it's impossible to say that that's what leprosy, tzaras, comes for, for the standard Lashon Hara. And unfortunately we don't have the time today, so we're not going to go into it. And there's a whole beautiful sikha from the Rebbe in Likut HaSichas Chelik Chavbeiz, where the Rebbe discusses what is this Lashon Hara for which Tumas Tzaras comes for. But that is not the topic that we will be discussing today. Then there's another thing, which is a lot of Mefarshim ask that question, and the Rebbe explains it beautifully in Likut HaSichas Chelik Chavzayin, that also we are not going to do it today, unfortunately. And that is that in Parshas Tazriya, it discusses the leprosy that happens on a person's skin, all different types, and then the leprosy that happens on a person's clothing. In Parshas Metzayda, it discusses the Tara, the purification of a Metzayda, and then the Torah goes back to discuss the leprosy that happens on houses. And the obvious question is, what is the order here? Why does the Torah first discuss leprosy on a person? Then the Torah discusses leprosy on a person's clothing. Then the Torah discusses what is the tar, what is the purification of a Metzayda, and then the Torah all of a sudden goes back to the leprosy of houses. There also, so the order is not correct over here. <coughs> But again, also this we're not going to be discussing because that's a separate sikha. What we will be discussing is one detail only. The leprosy on houses. We're going to be discussing the subject. First, we will be discussing the subject in the Pshut Shal Mikra, in the simple Pshat of the Pasik, And then we are going to be discussing it a little deeper and how the Rebbe explains it to us, which is really something magnificent. Because there are a few massive questions on this whole subject of leprosy on the houses. <clears throat> We're soon going to see that this whole concept of leprosy on the houses was really something very interesting because Hashem was actually sending a message to the Jewish people that the leprosy on the houses, what's the purpose? That a person is going to go into a house in Israel, in Eretz Yisrael, and he's going to find leprosy. And because of that, he's going to have to throw down the whole house. And then when they throw down the house, they're going to find treasures. And the question that everybody asks is, did this ever happen in history? It doesn't seem so. So what's this great news over here? So let's try to analyze a little bit the story of the leprosy in the houses. 
So if you don't mind, go to your sources. And this is going to be from Likut Esichis, Chelik Lamed Beis, volume 32, from pages 91 through 97. And by the way, if you want to make the story of the leprosy even a little more interesting, did you ever know that Mashiach is called a Metzayra? Mashiach is called someone who has leprosy. Why in the world is Mashiach called a Metzayra? Metzayra seems something so negative. Why is he called a Metzayra? Not only that, the Beis Amikdash. The Beis Amikdash is called Behatzorua. The Pasuk says, Vatzorua Sherboya Naga. The Metzayra. The Beis Amikdash is called the Metzayra. Why? <coughs> and this is also, again, in another Sikha, in Lukut Sikha, in volume 37, which we are not going to be discussing today also. What today we're going to do is just something in Chelek Lamed Beis on pages 91. So let's go straight to our sources. Source number one. This is in Metzayra, Perik Yud Dalet, Pasuk Lamed Gimel. says the Torah as follows. Vaidaber Hashem el Moshe vel Aaron Leimer. Moshe, the Rebish just spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu and to Aaron and he said as follows. Ki savoyu el Eretz Knan. When you will come to Eretz Yisrael, asher ani noisen lochem lachuza, that I am going to give you as a possession, Benosati nega tzoraz beveis eretz achuzaschem. And I'm going to put a nega tzoraz, I'm going to put leprosy in the house of eretz achuzaschem, of the land which is going to become your possession. Asks Rashi a question. Rashi on the post, you go to your source number two. What kind of business is Hashem is saying that Hashem is going to put a leprosy on the houses? It seems like He's saying so this is beautiful news to them. The Torah should have said, if you come to a house, maybe Hashem will put some leprosy. No. Hashem is telling you, you're going to go into a house, you're going to get leprosy. Why? And says Rashi, B'sura hilahem. This is a, such a great news for the Jewish people. Shanegoim boim aleihem. That the leprosy is going to come on their houses. Why? Lefi shehit minu emoirim. Matmoirim shel zohav. Because the emoirim, the goim, they hid treasures of gold in the walls of the houses the whole 40 years that they were in the desert through that the Rebish that puts a leprosy on the house the person has to break down the house and he finds these beautiful treasures so that's why Rashi makes it very clear don't think this is such a bad thing that a person gets leprosy on a house. Because behind that leprosy, there is a matmonius. There's going to be a treasure over there. And this is going to be something beautiful. It seems that the source for Rashi, for this concept of the... Um, uh, of the tzaras on the houses, is from the Medrash here in Vayikra Rabba. What does the Medrash say? Go to source number three, Vayikra Rabba, Parsha Yudzayin, Sivov. Says the Medrash like this, Tony Rabchia, Rabchia said, Vechipsura hilohem shenegoim baim aleihem. Is this such great news that the Rebish is going to bring them leprosy? Says the Medrash here, Tony Rabishim Bayuchai, said Rabishim Bayuchai Rashbi, Ki mesheshom muknanim, because the Knarim heard she Yisroel boim aleihem that the Yidden are going to come and they are going to capture the whole of Eretz Yisroel. Omdu, they got up. They hit minu momenum and they hid their money bebatim ubesodis in the houses, in the fields. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu said the Rebbe Shtev when he saw this, Ani iftachti laveseihem. I promised to their fathers, to the Yidden, when they were in the desert. The Rebbe Shtev said, Shani machni says b'neihem le'eretz m'leyo koltuv. That I'm going to bring them to a land which is full of all goodies. Shenemar as it says, Ubotim m'leyim koltuv. In Parshas Veschanon it says, The Rebbe Shtev said that he's going to bring them to a land which is full of goodies. Good stuff. How does the Rebish do to make sure that he didn't get all these beautiful good things? Says Rashi, the Rebish put some leprosy on the person's house. So then he's going to have to break it down. He has to demolish it. And then he's going to find a treasure. Ah, he says the Medrash, Vechimi bo ve'omer laknanim she Yisrael nechnasim l'aretz. Who is going to tell the Goyim that the Yidn are going into Eretz Yisrael? 
They're coming, they're coming to take over. Omer Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Nachman. Says Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Nachman. Gimul Prusdi Gamoy Sholach Yeshua Etzlo. When Yeshua was coming to capture Eretz Yisrael, after Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, and Yeshua was going over into Eretz Yisrael, he sent to the Goyim, to all the nations in Eretz Yisrael, three letters, three messages. Number one, Horeitz Elifnes Yifne. He gave them a chance. Whoever wants to leave, should leave. The second one is Lehashlim, whoever wants to make peace with the Yidden, Yashlim, let him make peace. The third one, Las is Milchama, Yase, whoever wants to make a war with the Yidden, let him go ahead and let's, uh, let's go to war. Says the Medrash, Girgoshi, one of the nations which is called Girgoshi, he went left on his own. Lefichach, therefore, that's what the Rebish gave him a land just as good as his land, and it brings a posse, gave him Ishaya, etc. Which goes on that the Rebish says, I'm going to take you to a good land, Zu Afriki. It goes on Africa. Give Oinim, the nation of the Give Oinim, Hishlimu, they made Sholem. With the Yidden, they made peace. Lamed Aleph Melachim, but the 31 kings, also Melchama. They made a Melchama, they made a war with the Yidden, Venaflu, and they lost. Seemingly, the Medrash is the source for Rashi. However, when we look carefully in the words, we are going to see that there are a few major differences between Rashi and the Medrash. And this is going to give us a total new explanation on this whole beautiful subject and how this is also obviously relevant to today. Rashi says, if you go to source number two, Rashi says, who put away these treasures? Shehitminu Emoirim, the nation of Emoiri. There were seven nations, many nations, but the seven major ones that Hashem told Avram Avinu that he's going to give him the land of the seven and then obviously of the other three, the ten, Keni Knizi Vekadmoini, but that's not part of this. So Rashi says, who was it? The Emoirim. The Medrash, in source number three, what does he say? Rashi says it was the nation of Emoiri. The Medrash says it was the nation of Knani. Why? Why does Rashi change from the Medrash? Why did he say that it was only the Emoiri? Not only that. According to Rashi and the Medrash, the story is different. According to Rashi, when did these Emoirim hide? their stuff, their treasures in the walls the, for 40 years. As Rashi says, if you look at source number two, the whole 40 years that the Yidim were in the desert, that is when the Goyim were putting away these treasures. According to the Medrash, it wasn't all the 40 years. It was right before the Yidim went into Israel when Yeshua sent these three letters and he gave him an option to make peace or to make war. That is when they started hiding. What's the difference between Rashi and the Medrash? Why, according to Rashi, it was the whole 40 years? And why, according to the Medrash, was it only right before they went into Eretz Yisrael? Which seems to be a major difference between the two. Not only that, the Medrash says that who is going to tell my ch the Goyim that the Yidn are coming? And not only that, the Medrash says that the Rebish just says, I told the Yidn that I'm going to give them a land full of good stuff. That is why he's bringing the Mitzaras. Why does the Rashi bring this? This makes the good news so much better because the Rebbe is saying, I'm giving them this beautiful land. Why does the Rashi bring this? Obviously, Rashi doesn't necessarily agree with this whole process that the Medrash says. So the question is, what is it? Then we're just going to say another two minor differences, but we can answer them in a very simple way. Rashi says, if you look at source number two, that what did the Yidden hide? Matmonius shall Zohav. They hid treasures of gold. What does the Medrash say? Vehitminu momoinam. They put their money. Why does Rashi say gold and the Medrash say they hid their money? Not only that, the Medrash says, Rashi says that where did they put these treasures? Bekira is batehem. In the walls of their houses. Where does the Medrash say that they put it? Bebatim ubesodes. In the houses and in the fields. Well, the last two points that we just said is not such a problem. That uh, why does Rashi say in the walls are only of the houses and not the fields? And why does he say gold and not money? Because the Pasuk says, what do we say in source number one? Where am I going to put the leprosy? 
Eretz Achuzaskan. He's going to put it in the houses. So because the Rebishta says in the Torah he's going to put it in the houses, Rashi doesn't want to bring the story of the field. And also, when a person has a choice to hide something in a wall, what's, what's he going to do faster? To hide a piece of gold, which is very precious, or a lot of money? People don't hide money in the walls. People will hide jewelry, they'll hide uh, diamond, they'll hide gold, but they won't hide money because money a lot of times loses its value and it's also very bulky. So therefore Rashi doesn't say that. But the first question that we asked, that why does Rashi say that it was a Meiri and not Knani? Why does Rashi say that it was the whole 40 years that the Goyim were hiding this away and according to the Medrash it was only later? And then one last question. When we look in the passage, go to source number one, there is a redundancy. If you give a look, it says, When you will come to the land of Canaan, that I'm going to give you as a possession, I'm going to put a negatoras, a leprosy, where? Again, in the, house of, in the houses of your possessions. Why? It could have just said, In your houses. Why does he say again, in your possession, Lachuza? Just uh, He just said before, Lachuza. <clears throat> Not only that. First we say, Lachuza, for a possession. And then we say, Of your possession. Why? Why does the Pasuk say all these expressions? So, in order to understand all of this, <clears throat> we have to um, preface with one more question. And that is, the Medrash said something very strange. The Medrash says that Rabbi Shem Barichai said that the Rebishta says, who is going to come and tell the Goyim that the Yidin are coming to Eretz Yisrael? What does it mean, who's going to come and tell the Goyim? You want to tell me the Goyim didn't know? There's a Pasuk. There's a Pasuk Mefurish. Look in your source number four. This is right after the Eden went out of Mitzrayim. And they came to the Yamsuf by the splitting of the Red Sea. So right after the splitting of the Red Sea, what did they do? Oz, Yashir, Mesha. They all sang a beautiful song that we say every single day in Davening. What did they say towards the end of that song? Oz, Niv, Halu, Elufei, Edoim, Eilei, Moyav, Yechazei, Meirad, No, Moigu, Kol, Yosh, Vechnan. What does that mean? The Pasuk says, Oz nivalu Edim. Then the great, the generals of Edom were afraid. Moyav the, the big, the, the great people of Moyav, they got all feared. No Moigu kol All the Nei people, the, the inhabitants of Knan, no Moigu, they melted. As Rashi says, look in source number five, Rashi and the Pasuk says, no Moigu namasu, they melted. All the Goyim, when they heard the Yidna Gaunagar of Mitzrayim, oh boy, they said, they're coming to Israel, they're going to take us over. Omer, what did they say, says Rashi, source number five? They are going to come now to Eretz Yisrael and they're going to take us over and therefore they are going to uh, finish us off. That means that all the Goyim knew that the Yidden are coming. Therefore, when did the Goyim start putting this away? When they saw that the Yidden are coming. Was this for 40 years? No. As long as they didn't were in the desert, they were in the desert. They were constantly keeping watch of when are the Yidin coming. So they saw that they left Mitzrayim, went by months, one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, twenty years, and the Yidin are still not coming. So the Goyim they had no reason why they should hide their treasures. So therefore, when did they do it? When Yeshua sent the uh, messengers. What does Rashi say? No. The whole 40 years they were putting them away. Why? Why should they do it at all the 40 years when they saw the Yidin are not coming anyways? Therefore we must say that there is something very interesting over here. And all of this will be understood with one word as usual. When we learn Chumash Rashi and we have so many questions, Rashi with one word opens up a beautiful light on this whole story. And we're going to find something that none of the Mepharshim say, and this is going to be totally revolutionary. And that is, if you noticed, we said before, in source number two, 
that Rashi says, who are these people that put this, these treasures? Did all the nations do it? No. There's only one nation that hid their treasures. Who is it? Emoirim. And the question is, why Emoirim? Why are we singling out Emoiri from all the other seven nations? The Rebbe should told Avraham Avinu that I'm going to give you the land of all these nations. Why are only the Emoirim doing this? And Rashi doesn't explain it. Why? As the Rebbe taught us all along. That if Rashi says something and he doesn't explain it, it means that he already did it before somewhere in the Chumash. He already explained it to us before. Where did he explain it to us? Very, very simple. But what is going to happen over here is, we are going to see that not all of Israel had these leprosies. Only the Amoiri. Why? Let's look over here in the Teda before, where do we find that Amoiri is being singled out? Let's go back to Parsha Lech Lecha. If you go to your source number 6. In Parsha Lech Lecha it discusses the famous Briz Ben Absarim, the covenant that the Rebishta made with Avraham Avinu. And the Rebishta told him, look, Right now you are in the land of Canaan. I am going to give this land to your children. And the Rebbe the whole famous story in Lechach, I'm sure you remember, that the Rebbe told him to cut the animals into two halves. And the Rebbe and Abraham Avinu walked in between those two pieces because this is how you make a covenant. And the Rebbe said something very interesting. Your children are going to go for 400 years in a foreign land and they're going to be tortured. But after that, they're going to come back here to this land. But the Rebishter didn't just say they're going to come back to this land. The Rebishter added another very interesting detail. What is it? Let's look in the source. Go to source number six in Pasha Lechacha, Perik Tezvav, Pasukit Beis. It says like this, by source six, by he Hashem Eshlavoi, when Avraham Avinu was talking to the Ebishter and all of a sudden the sun started setting down. And Avraham Avinu got this tiredness. And this unbelievable fear fell on Avraham Avinu. And the Ebishter tells him as follows, listen carefully. The Ebishter told Avraham Avinu, you should know that your children are going to be strangers in a land that doesn't belong to them. And they are going to be slaves and tortured for 400 years. There's also some good part to that, that Vigam Esagoya Sharyavaidu Donanoichi, and that nation which are going to do this to your children, I'm going to judge them. Separately, and then the Yidn are going to come out with a big booty. When are they going to come back here to Eretz Yisrael? Says, says the Rebbe The fourth generation is going to come back here to Eretz Yisrael. Why? Why four? Why not one? Why not three? Why not seven? What's the number four? Says the Pasuk, Ki Because the sin of the Emoiri will not be complete till then. In other words, in order for the Emoiri to be kicked out from Israel, they have to sin up to a certain amount. Once they have done their share of sinning, that is when the Rebishta can kick them out from Eretz Yisrael. What does this mean exactly? That the sin of the Amiri has to be filled. Let's look at Rashi. Source number seven. Rashi says, what's the Doi Revi? What's this fourth generation? Says Rashi, Le'achar she'yiglu le'mitzrayim. After the Eden are going to go into Golos in Mitzrayim. Ye'yusham gimel doiris. They're going to be there for three generations. Ve'harevi, the fourth generation, Yoshuvu le'aretz azayis. They're going to come back here. Ve'chein ho'yon, this is how it was. Yaakov yorad le'mitzrayim. Yaakov came down. Look at the generations. Yaakov had a son, Yehuda. Yehuda had a son, Peretz. Peretz had a son, Chetzrein. And Chetzrein had a son, Kolev, Kolev and Chetzrein, who came to Eretz Yisrael. So four generations, they came later. Why four? Because the sin of the Emoiri is not yet complete. 
Says Rashi, Liyos mishtaleach me arze ad oisos man. That a moiri, there is absolutely no reason why he should be kicked out of from his land before that time. She'ein a kodesh baruch hu nifra meuma. The Rebbe that does not uh, punish a nation until they actually they, they went over full they, they did just too much and the Rebbe says till here and that's it now, now you're going to be kicked out so what do we see over here that although the Rebbe promised Avraham Avin that the Yirna are going to get a land of seven nations he said it's going to be a process they're not going to get the seven nations right away First, they're going to get one of them, which is a moiri. Once they get a moiri, then we have to wait for the other ones that they should also finish. And that is why we see. Moishe Rabbeinu started this concept of capturing the nations to prepare for Eretz Yisrael, for Yeshua. How many did Moishe Rabbeinu capture? One. Which one? A moiri. As you can see, go to your source number eight. In Parsha Chukas. Peri Kafalov, Pasuk Kafalov, what does it say there? Vayishlach Yisrael Malochim El Sichain Melech Oemeri Lemer. The Yidden sent Malochim, they sent messengers to who? To Sichain, the king of Emoiri. And what did they tell him? We would like to go through your land. Sichain didn't want. What did the Yidden do? Continue source number eight. Vayakehu Yisrael Lefichorev. The Yidden had a war with him and they killed them all and they inherited their land and over here it says the boundaries that they took and then the Rebbe just says in the Torah that the Yidden even before they went into Yisrael on the other side of the Arden they already captured the Emoiri only one and the passage continues. Look at passage, source number eight, the fourth line. Vayishlach Moshe leragel es Yazer. Moshe Rabbeinu sent two spies to Yazer. Vayil kedu benoiseho, and they captured the whole area. Vayyeresh es ha emoiri asher sham, and they inherited what again the emoiri. So the first nation that the Yidden captured was the emoiri. Later, Yehoshua went into Eretz Yisrael, and slowly but surely, he captured also the other one. Therefore, says Rashi, that where did this business of having a leprosy on houses happen? <clears throat> In whose area? Only the Emoiri. They are the only ones that had this concept of leprosy in their houses. It wasn't all over Eretz Yisrael. It was only in the part of Emoiri. And if that's the case, now we understand why Rashi doesn't bring the whole story of the Medrash. That the Medrash says, the Rebbe says, I'm going to take the Eden to a land with so many goodies. Why? And, uh, and that's why they're going to have the leprosy over there. Says Rashi, no, the leprosy wasn't in the whole of Eretz Yisrael. The leprosy was only in the Emoiri. And that's why, what does the Pasuk say? Venosati nega tzoras, in source number one, I'm going to put a nega tzoras where? Beveis Eretz achuzaschem, in the your possession. What do I mean your possession? The Rebish to gave Eretz Yisrael to the Yidden. The other side of the Yarden, did the Rebish to give it to them? No. Bnei Godu Bnei Reuven, they are the ones who requested it. But if they wouldn't have requested it, not necessarily would the Rebishte give it to them. Therefore, says the Rebishte, where am I going to give you this leprosy? In the land which is your possession, the one that you requested. Only Emoiri. And soon we're going to understand what's the connection exactly of Emoiri to the uh, treasures. But now, all the questions that all the Mephoshim ask regarding this whole subject, we don't find that they used to do this leprosy in the houses. It's true, because this was something exclusive only for a Emoiri on the other side of the Arden. And if that is the case, now we understand another very interesting question. We say <laughs> that they took these treasures and they hid them in the walls. Now let me ask you a very, very simple question. Who hides something in a wall? Someone who knows he's going to have to run away. And then, is he going to come back? 
or not necessarily. If he's not going to come back, then why is he hiding the stuff in the walls? Obviously, he's supposed to be coming back. And if that's the case, now we can understand another very interesting question. Why is it that they hid the stuff in the walls? Who hides something? Someone who is planning to come back, he hides it in the wall, and then when he's coming back from his trip or wherever he's going to go away, he's going to find his treasure. These are Moirim, they knew they're going to be kicked out, and they're not coming back. Why did they hide it? Nishtain gedacht, the Rebbe is a when the Yidden, the Second World War, when they were being driven out by the Nazis, the Machshemom, a lot of them hid stuff in the walls. Why? Because they knew eventually the war will be finished, they're going to come back. And they're going to find it. And many people found the things that they hid. But over here, the Emoirim know that they're going to be kicked out, right? So then, what are they uh, hiding? For who? For when? They're planning to come back. And the answer is, yes, they're planning to come back. Why? What did we just say before? Why are the Emoiri the one who are being kicked out? Because they knew that the Rebishta told Avram Avinu by Brisbane and Absorim that because of their sins, they are going to be kicked out. So what did they know? That how does the Rebishta operate? That the Rebishta puts somebody in a certain place. Once they sin, he kicks them out. And then he puts somebody else there. So, just like they get kicked out because of their sins, the same thing is going to happen to the Yidden. The Yidden are going to go to Eretz Yisrael. After a few years, they're going to sin, and the Rebbe will kick them out, and the Mary will be able to come back. <clears throat> How do they know that the Rebbe is going to do the same thing to the Yidden? They saw. The Yidden were in the desert for 40 years. Why were they in the desert for 40 years? They were supposed to go straight from Eretz Yisrael, from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, directly into Eretz Yisrael. Why didn't they? Because they sinned. So they knew that the Yidden and them and the Merim are on the same boat. That there's going to be a time when they're good. There's a time when they sin. When they're good, the Rebishta gives them the land. When they're bad, the Rebishta takes it away from them. And that's it. Just like by them. And that is why Rashi says that when did they do this? Throughout the 40 years. Why? Because they were keeping tabs of the Yidden. You know, are they, pro are they doing properly? Are they not doing properly? Etc. And this way, we can understand why they were hiding it. Because they knew that they are being kicked away for a certain reason. And the Mirza Shem, they will be able to come back. So that's why we can understand now why the Take hid the things into these walls. So now everything makes sense. Rashi explains, Rashi has a very massive question. Why is it that the Rebishtir is giving such absurdity to the Yidden? that there's going to give leprosy, and we hardly find this, that it ever happened? And the answer is very simple. That the reason why it didn't happen in Eretz Yisrael is because it wasn't supposed to happen in Eretz Yisrael. It was only supposed to happen in Emoiri, and even in Emoiri in a very, very small fashion. So, according to this now, we understand this whole story of the Nega, the Tsaras, in Eretz Achuzaschem, in the land that the Yidden possessed because they are the ones that requested the other side of the yard. But if that's the case, we have to understand what is going on over here. Number one, why is this connected Dafka to the Amoirim and not to all the nations? Why Taka didn't the Rebbe to give it to all the nations? And the second thing is, there's a Gemara. Look at the Gemara number in source number nine. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin, in the fine Aleph Amid Aleph, Bayis Hamenuga, this concept of having a tzaras and a house, loy hoya veloy osid liyes, never happened and it's not going to happen. This is the Gemara makes it very clear. Says the Gemara velomo nidrash. So why is the Torah telling us about it? It says the Gemara droish vekabel schar. It's in order so we learn and we get the reward for it. But it's basically a concept just of learning for the sake of learning, but not necessarily that it happens on the practical level. So the question is, something doesn't make sense. It's impossible that the Rebishter gives a mitzvah, a story, a concept, and it should be just for the sake of learning, but not to be able to do it in actuality. When we look how Teira Sachsidus explains it, it's going to be something magnificent. There are many places where it explains this concept, but we're going to go to the source, and the source is in a Sefer Teira Oir, written by the Alter Rebbe, 
And this is in Torah 8 on page Kuf Gimel. As we said right in the beginning of the class, over here we're not talking about Lashon Hara, the regular Lashon Hara. No, it's impossible because otherwise everybody would become a leprosy. What is this idea of Lashon Hara? Let's look what Al-Tareb explains to us. <coughs> go, go to your source number 10. Says al Tareb like this. hatam, and for this reason, Iker Moker Nimshal Iker Moker Bishem Ksil. That the uh, source of all negative comes from something which is called Ksil, which is a fool. A fool. Why? Mipneroiv Divre Haksil Hanikro Emoiri. This clipper, this negativism that causes all the problems, what is it called? Emoiri. What does Emoiri mean? That talks. Emoir. Amira. Talking. Shemar Bedvarim. When a person, you know, they, even this in English they say that better keep your mouth shut, and let people doubt of how smart you are, then open your mouth and then take away all doubts. Because as long as a person doesn't talk, <coughs> we don't know, we don't know what he does. When a person starts talking, ah, oh, the problem is that there are people who talk and talk and they, unfortunately they say not the correct things. And this is what causes all the problems. And this is what Alter Rebbe says, This is because the Yidden, unfortunately, while they're davening, <coughs> excuse me, they have all these machshav all these uh, thoughts which are not proper. And this is the source for all the negative speech that is in the world. We have to take that negative speech and we have to turn it to a positive. And what is it? As we see that the Rebishter, that Yaakov Avinu, when he came to bless Yosef, what did he tell him? I'm going to give you the city of Shechem. What did he say? Asher lokachti miyad emoiri, that I took from the hands of the emoiri. He took Shechem from the emoiri. How did I take it? Becharbi uvekashti, with my sword and with my uh, bow, bow and arrow. Says Rashi, who is this Emoiri? Who is this Emoiri? Look at Rashi, source number 10. <coughs> Ze Esav, this goes on Esav. Sheho Yotzod Esaviv used to swindle and trick his father, Yaakov, uh, Yitzchak. Be Fiv with his speech. Esav had the negative speech. What did Yaakov do? Lo Emoiri. I took away the speech of Esav, and I replaced it with a different speech. What did I replace it with? Bechar bivekashti, with my sword and my bow and arrow. Says the Targum, what does it mean Bechar bivekashti? Betzlusi bebausi. With my davening, with my learning, the oisius of Torah and Tefillah. And as Rashi says, that Bekashti, you could also, with my bow and arrow, you could also read, read it, Bakoshosi, my prayers, my prayers to Hashem. So what do we see here? That what is the job of a Yid? The job of a Yid is to take the Emoiri, to take this Klippa, to take this negative speech that goes on in the world, the speech of Esav, and what do we do? We switch it for words of Taita and Tefillah. <coughs> what does that mean in our time? We are now in a time when ve'olu moishim behar tziyon lishpoit esar Esav. Esav and Yaakov are these two uh, neg uh, contrary forces that are constantly working. Esav is the symbol of Golus. Yaakov is the symbol of the Geula. That's why the end of Golus, what's going to happen? We are going to judge Esau. What does it mean we're going to judge Esau? We're going to transform Esau. That all these things that Esau tries to accomplish in the negative, <coughs> we do it in the positive through the words of Torah and Tefillah. Which means the world is filled with the Narishkeiten of Esau. The words of Esau, the speech of Esau. 
come to Yidin, and they filled the world with words of Taira and Tefillah. And this is what the Rebish just says, that I am going to put Teitzaras where Bebeis Eretz Achuzaschem. Who is going to do this? The Emoiri. Because the Emoiri are the ones who are doing the negative. And what do the Yidin find when they break the Emoiri, when they break those walls? They find Matmonius Shazov. They find the treasure of gold and, and precious. And this is the job of the Yidin, to take this world, <coughs> which seems to be a negative world, a ace of world, and we transform it and show that really, what is it? A dira betachtonim, a dwelling place for Hashem. And if that is the case, we'll find something very, very interesting here. <coughs> if you look at the end of your um, curriculum, you see there's a photostat of the last page of this book, which is called the Hayom Yom. This is a book that was written by the Rebbe in 1942-43. And at the end there's a page that explains the Rebbe's um, uh, institutions. The Rebbe, when he came to America, the previous Rebbe was still alive. And the previous Rebbe placed the Rebbe on three institutions. One is called Kehos which is the publishing house, which gives out all the Sfarim of Lubavitch. Another one is the Merkaz Linyone Chinuch, which is the uh, educational arm of all the education, uh, the, the schools under Lubavitch. And the third one is called Machane Yisrael. What is this Machane Yisrael? <coughs> if you look, you see on the page over here, it says clearly that the Nasi, the, the president, the one in charge of this um, institution is the Rebbe. And then it says Matarasa. What is the purpose of this Machan Israel? To influence all the members to strengthen Judaism through doing Kiyom of Torah Mitzvahs and also <coughs> to encourage all the Yidin to bring them back to Tshuva. We're talking about this is in the 40s. The whole concept of going out there, and outreach, and, and bringing Yidin back to their source was unheard of. This is where it all started. This is the beginning of everything. <coughs> I'm not going to go through the whole <coughs> thing of what Machan Yisrael is, but we see over here, as you can see, the fourth paragraph starts with the words Mishnayas Balpeh. One of the most important things that Machan Yisrael was doing, uh, by the way, I'm sorry, we have to go back to where it says Matarasa, the purpose, that the purpose is to bring them back to their, so to bring Yidin back to their source, that they should do Tshuva, Torah, Maisim Tovim, and then Lefarsim HaEmes, we have to publicize the truth. Asher Lealter Lechuva Lealter Legiul Ashleim Al Yedei Mashiach Tzidkenu, that as soon as we're going to do Tshuva, is right away we're going to have the Geula, the redemption through Mashiach Tzidkenu. <coughs> And it gives over here two, three things that Machan Yisrael does. The second thing that it says is Mishnah is Balpeh. What is this Mishnah is Balpeh? So it explains over here that all the six Sidre Mishnah, all the six orders of the Mishnah, should be learned by heart by the, uh, by the members. And what's the purpose? Letaher Avir, to purify the air. Why to purify the air? Al yedei amiras vechazoras amishnayis bebayis subichutz through Yidden going around and just repeating words of the Mishnah inside, outside, barachoyv in the street, bachanus in the store, basubvei subway. There's no word in Hebrew yet. Those days for a subway, so it says a subway. Ubechol mokim noki and in every place which is clean. Why? Says the Rebbe Vesoid Godelhu. This is an unbelievable secret. Lehokel Chav Lehamashiach. This is to uh, ease the birth pangs of Mashiach. Ule Karev Pami Mashiach Tzidkenu Bechesed of Rachmin. And to be able to bring Mashiach closer with Chesed and mercy. So here we see that what is the Klippa, what is the negative force that brings all the negative? The emoiri, the speech, which speech of Esav. Come the Yidden, and they give the speech of Yaakov, 
What is the speech of Yaakov? Be'ba'usi, be'tzalusi, the words of Torah, the words of Tefillah. And that's why when the Rebbe came to America and started preparing the world for the coming of Mashiach, what did he say? What we have to do is we have to purify the air, we have to take the klipe of emoiri, we have to take the um, negative forces which are done through the emoir of Esav, and we turn them over, we transform them to words of Taira and Fila, and we purify the whole air of the world, and through this we are going to reveal that this world is a dira betachtainim, a beautiful dwelling place for Hashem. So at least now we see that this whole story of the leprosy on the houses, it's true on the literal sense in Israel, Itaka didn't happen. But the Gemara says that if you're going to learn it, you're going to receive the reward. When we are going to learn, use the words of Torah and Tefillah and purify the Avir all over the world, then we will be Zeicha, that we are going to see the real Metzayra, <coughs> Who is the real Metzayra? Mashiach, as the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, that Mashiach is called a Metzayra. And as I said, we're going to be discussing it in other classes. We actually have a beautiful class in our archive of why Mashiach is called a Metzayra. Because a Metzayra is somebody in a very, very high level. And Mashiach is the person on the highest level possible. And therefore, <coughs> He's called the Metzayda, and the Besamikdash is called Hatzaru, as we said before, the Metzayda, because they bring out the highest levels here on this earth. And then when we are going to do these things of purifying the air all over the world, then we will be to have the Geulo HaMitis Vashleima through Mashiach Tzitkeinah.